Here we're going to solve this rational equation, and whenever we're trying to solve an equation that's fractions, the strategy is we'll multiply everything by the lowest common denominator. And to do that, we'll look at all the denominators first, factor as much as possible, and then we'll construct the lowest common denominator. Alright, so for the first one, we have x over x minus 2. Well, for the x minus 2, we cannot factor on anything, right? So we'll just keep it as how it is. And let me write it down right here x over x minus 2. And then we are going to leave some space. And we are going to see why that we are leaving this space in a minute. Let's continue. For the second fraction, we have 1 over x minus 4. Once again, for the x minus 4, we cannot factor on anything. So we'll just maintain how it is. So we have plus 1 over x minus 4. And we'll also leave some space. And continue, we have the equal sign. 2 on the top, over, right, x squared minus 6x plus 8. We can actually factor this out, right? So you see that uh, this is a trinomial, and then the coefficient in front of the x squared is just 1. So we can just do it as x and x. And then we ask ourselves, what times 4 give us positive 8? And together, they will add up to negative 6. The answer for that will be minus 2 and minus 4. Right? Because negative 2 times negative 4 will give us positive 8. Negative 2 minus 4 will give us negative 6. So we are going to put down the factor version of this denominator, which is x minus 2 times x minus 4. Okay, so now let's see what the lowest common denominator is after we have factored out everything on the denominator. Well, you see that we have the x minus 2 in common. And we just need to put it down whenever we see the common factor in common, like this, x minus 2. And we also have the x minus 4 here and here. And we just need to put down one of them, the x minus 4. And this will be the lowest common denominator. There's nothing else. So we are going to multiply everything by this. And we will know if we are doing this right or wrong, because after we multiplied out the lowest common denominator, there shouldn't be any more fractions. All right, so then I'll put on this right here with the space that we left earlier. And this is why. So let me put down the x minus 2 times x minus 4 right here. Likewise, I'll put this down in this space that we had earlier, x minus 2, x minus 4, and then also x minus 2 times x minus 4. OK, so we are multiplying everything by the LCD. And for the first one, we see that the x minus 2 here cancel with this x minus 2, right? So we can cancel this and that. And then for the second one, the x minus 4 will cancel with that x minus 4. And then for this one, this x minus 2 cancels out with this x minus 2. And then the x minus 4 also cancels out with this x minus 4. And as you can see, for the remaining things, we are not going to have fraction anymore. So that's a good thing. And to continue, here we have the x in front of this parentheses. So we'll take this x and distribute it into the parentheses. So x times x, that will give us x squared. x times negative 4, that's minus 4x. And then for this one, we have positive 1, and technically we distribute. It's just a good habit, OK? I know 1 times anything is just itself, but then it's a good habit that you have to think about this is positive 1 and distributing to the parentheses. So 1 times x is plus x, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. OK, nothing changes because we're multiplying by 1. All right, and this is equal to the number 2. Everything else was canceled out. So this is what we have. And as we can see, we have x to the second power. This is what we call a quadratic equation. And to do that, we are going to make one side equal to 0, and then factor the other, and then we solve from there. But before I do that, we see that we have negative 4x plus x. We could have combined like terms. So let's go ahead and do that. We will have x squared, negative 4x plus x, that's minus 3x. And then we have this minus 2, and this is equal to 2. All right, so now we are going to make one side equal to 0. So perhaps we are going to minus 2 on both sides. So this way, this 2 in black and this minus 2 in red will cancel each other out and then we can get our 0 that we want. Here we will have x squared 
minus 3x, negative 2, minus 2, that's minus 4. And then that's equal to the 0 that we want. All right. so now we are going to factor this out. The coefficient in front of the x squared is just 1, so we can just open two parentheses, and then we know that x times x will give us the x squared. And now we have to ask ourselves, what times 4 will give us negative 4? Together, they will add up to negative 3. The response for that will be negative 4, positive 1. As we can see, negative 4 times positive 1 will give us negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1, that will give us negative 3. So this is how we can factor this one out, and then we have the equals to 0. And then we set each factor equals to 0 and solve on there. So we have x minus 4 equals to 0, and also we have to look for x plus 1 equals to 0. For this one, we add 4 on both sides, so we are saying that x is equal to 0 plus 4, so that's positive 4. And for the second one, x plus 1 is equal to 0, we subtract 1 on both sides, and we are saying that x is equal to negative 1. So we are done. As we can see, we have x is equal to 4, and x is equal to negative 1. However, whenever we're trying to solve a rational equation, whenever we're solving an equation that's fractions, we must check to see if they are actually the correct answer or not. Sometimes we may get fake answers. In this case, x is equal to 4 is actually not correct. Why? Because if you plug in 4, into this x, you get what? You get 1 over 4 minus 4, which is 1 over 0. So once again, let me show you. If you plug in 4 into this x, we end up with 1 over 4 minus 4, which is the same as saying 1 over 0. And whenever we have 0 on the denominator, this is not good, right? This is undefined. So 4 is not correct, even though it came up from our calculation, but this is a Bank answer. And now let's check x is equal to negative 1. If you plug in negative 1 into this x on the denominator, we just need to worry if the number will make the denominator 0 or not. If we plug in negative 1 into this x, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. That's good because that's not 0 on the bottom. Negative 1 minus 4, that's negative 5. Once again, that's not 0, so that's good. Negative 1, if you plug it into here, once again, it's not going to give you 0. So, the answer to this question is x is equal to 1. I mean, x is equal to negative 1 only. This is the only answer. x is equal to negative 1. That's it.